Okay, I've been getting asked a lot about how I make jerky and I know I've been kind of screwing around and doing little clips here and there. My meat slicer is a 12 inch uh, Teflon. Helps with uh, make sure the meat doesn't stick. My knives are six inches, um, curved boating knives, and I'll get into that later. These are, this is my sixth rack. So once I get done, Cutting all that up and filling that up and I'll go I'll get more in a detail about that. So just hang on a second So then when we come out here and follow The wood I have now, which is alder Now you'll see at this point now. It's totally fine. My fishing gears up there. It's not a big deal That alder the dry alder right now is the best time that I'm getting to dry it out is because I'm using it for, I'm getting this ready for the winter time. I'm always stocking up and getting ready for the winter time. Now, in the summertime though, when you're running anything like this and you're smoking it, you wanna use green alder. Green alder is basically wet and will not torch anything or go up in like, like a matchstick. Now, as we go over here, you'll see next to my shop, is that I have my tamarack on the side, so that keeps me warm in the winter. This is also we're starting to build up on, and that's very important to have both of these woods. Now, going over the shed, I've been getting asked this a lot. These are four by eight slabs. Now you'll notice that when you're looking at this, that it is not, uh, particle board or that OSB or whatever it is you want to get if you're gonna build this now if you're doing something this is a project that you are thinking about doing because I've been asked about this a lot so this is why I'm doing it is that you do the best use the best you're not on a budget because this is the budget so if you're not then save up and do it right okay so you'll get five pieces of three quarters uh, inch plywood all right now, it will, it'll be easy measuring because all four pieces will go around. It will make it will make your whole shed, okay? So if you go all the way around it, you'll see that it's it's basically your your box, right? There's my sled for hauling elk out or buffalo or whatnot. So that's how it goes. So you'll need at least five pieces, okay? Now, to try to break this down to the best I can is that I have five racks. These, not, and actually, there's five racks in here and then I have the sixth one inside, okay? So as you look down at it, and then you'll notice the fire. Now, now one of the things is to, I'm gonna start from the bottom right here with the fire, is that it's, it's burning, it's burning alder. It's not wet alder, it's dry alder. So it needs to be a smaller fire during the summer. And you don't want to, so the, you don't want to get too crazy on it, I guess is what I'm trying to say. It needs to be small because in the summer it gets really hot. Now, the way the current flows from the heat, it goes from the back, from right there, to the front. So you, that's how you're gonna want, sorry for my finger, but that's how you're gonna want your bigger slices in the back or, uh, and in the front. Now, when you're looking at the bottom, you're gonna notice I have these little pieces of spreader, uh, spreader metal, spreader metal, just in case. I just talk too fast sometimes. And what happens is that if you're using alder, then you're not gonna have to worry about embers popping off and catching on fire. So like if you watch Tamarack burn, it has a lot of embers popping or any other wood, it pops. So then you have, that will be a cause of concern. So everybody's like, oh my gosh, this is gonna burn down. Your fire's getting crazy. And it's like, well, I have all this. I'm not using a wood that that's going to be literally popping off. Now, alder comes from German. That means that wood that bleeds. So once you get the green wood and you cut it, then it turns red. 
Now, one of the things too, okay, let's see, where are we at? So let's get a good look at how big this is. So give you an idea as we walk up, and there's five racks. So when we're looking at these racks, I can produce uh, about two gallon bags of jerky per rack. And I'll measure them once I come back down. So we got the one, two, three, four, and then five. And then, of course, you guys all know I'm in rolled Yakima. So this is part of my living substance. Now, one of the important things is, is too, is that you get a get on top and you get some sort of metal on top so the snow. Well, I'm from Washington State, so the snow is in here. I want it to come off. I don't want it sitting up there and collapsing my my shed. So you'll get a good idea. So it's on this side, right? So as we come down, I'm gonna measure each the racks for you guys too, to give you guys a general idea of how big these are. So, so the, the length of it is is about 44 inches. That's how long each one of these racks are. Okay. Now, when we look at the width. Goes to about 37 and three quarters. All right, so that gives you good an idea about how. Now you can go to your your local. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how to put it because I have a the Hara Farm Shop. They they do all this for me. Anything I need. And one of the things is too is, is make sure that when you're building this is that these come out far enough for you. Too. I mean if you want to shorten it up and make smaller ones make sure these come out far enough and then pre-drill these down so like you take a screw or not a screw put a, a put a bit in there and drill them through and then screw down into them the same way and I first started out when I first started doing this I started with three racks and then I did I did uh, I added two more and I was trying to get more productive with it so I asked my local farm shop to to do um, do uh, another spreader wire. So I had four, sorry, spreader wire, uh, spreader metal. So I had four. So I added this one right here. I added this one and this one. So now I have five, I had three. So I was thinking to, to make the production go faster, I was thinking, oh, I have an extra one. So that's the one you see in there. In the shed in the beginning of the video and I was like this is not going fast enough we need more so then I added those two and now I have a sixth one in there same they're all the same size and then I work on that too and I'll give you another side view of on the other side same I have my sled for when I'm doing my buffalo or elk or anything else so now the other thing is too, I screwed up on this. I wanna show everybody with this. I screwed up on this when I was doing it, but I was doing it in the middle of winter time. Is that I added the extra, I added the extra two by four in there. It doesn't need to be in there, so I screwed that up. It needs to be internal, but it still works good. It's solid. Now, one of the last tips I'm gonna give you guys is that you look at my, you look at my shed and see how black it is. Now, this is important that you listen to this part, okay? So we put our shed together and everything like that and you're like, yeah, it's cool, I'm ready to make jerky. Whatever you're doing, uh, what kind you're making or whatever it is. Same way with the salmon. I could do the salmon one too and show you guys, but it's the very same thing. Now, the thing is you need to take your olive oil. I would like to use olive oil. You could take your, your oil of any type, I guess. And then just take your like, Get a brand new brush and then like a painting brush and then soak it in the oil and then start painting, basically not painting, but start lathering all your shed up with that oil. Now, if you look back closely into all of it, you look all the way down into everything I've done is that you're gonna notice it is pitch black besides down there where the, the racks or anything like that. Now you're gonna do the, you're gonna 
you're gonna put olive oil, in my case, olive oil, all over the inside of it, everywhere. Lather it down, make sure you have your little uh, spreaders down on the bottom so not, if they kick off, then you don't have to worry about it catching on fire. Yes, I have done that because it has flopped off and burned it down. So you look right here and it just happened because it just rolled right off the fire. So once you do that, make sure you run a fire at least two days in a row. A solid two days. Until you start seeing it get all black and everything. Now, if you don't do that and you start running your jerky, it's going to taste like plywood. So make sure that you do that and run it for two days. I at least did it for two days straight. I just sat out here and ran a fire the whole time. And then your racks will slide in like this so on and so forth and then once you have your jerky all loaded up and everything remember don't get crazy on it it's your oven you're smoking and drying you are not cooking it so make sure it stays really light on there and then for me the, like i said the bigger pieces go in the back because that's the way the current runs it's from the back around and to the front so all the lighter pieces, the thinner pieces will stay on the edges where the wood is, like that. And all the thick pieces will stay in, in the back and the front. So once it's getting finished up and whatnot, and I'm shutting it down and wanting to get that heavy smoke on it, then I'll lock it up. If, it, if you're in a ghetto town or anything like that, it's no joke. It's a lot of jerky. Make sure you lock that shit up for real though. And then um, I think, and then I put it like a little patch on mine because one of the pieces of wood rolled out, but all together, I hope that helps you on your smoking. And this is over like 10 feet tall to give it, and I stood on the, on the, the ladder to give you guys a good idea. We'll do it again i'll show you the amount of work that we're putting into it is by using alder and then it's wet wet alder green alder in the summer and dries for the winter i hope i helped you out on anything if you have any questions let me know